Hello and welcome to part 30 of my video series in how to use Blender 2.6. This is part 1 of a 3 part mini series in how to do IK or inverse kinematics rigging in Blender 2.6. Before we get started though, there is some housekeeping to get through. Uh, this is my first video, I'll be recording in full 1080p, uh, which means the screen that I'm using has a higher resolution. Um, and so what that means for you is that all of the um, words and all the buttons on the screen will look smaller in relation to the actual 3D view space when I'm using Blender. Um, so let me know what you think of that. Is, are the uh, buttons and words on the screen too hard to see? Or do you, do you appreciate the greater resolution and the greater screen real estate? Let me know in the comments section below. I'll appreciate it. I'm also using for this video for the first time, I'm using a new microphone. I got a lot of comments about the quality or the lack thereof of my audio in previous uh, tutorials. So I'm using a new microphone. It's a Snowball um, USB condenser microphone. The audio should be a lot better this time. I'm also doing a little bit of post-processing on the audio, so it should sound a whole lot better. The model that I'm using in this tutorial, actually all three parts of this mini-series in IK rigging, uh, was not created by me, it was created by a user on blendswap.com named uh, Denartri, or Denartri, I'm not quite sure how to say that. This is his model, uh, I'm just using it, but I'm going to provide a download for this um, slightly modified version of his model, his character model, this model in front of you. Um, and I've modified it a little bit. Now, what is IK rigging? Well, um, this video is kind of a follow-up to my first video using Bones, which was called Bones and Rigging 101. I'll put a link to that video up on the screen right now. You should go ahead and check out that video before you come back to this video. It's important that you understand how to make bones. I'm going to kind of be glass um, grazing over that because I've already done it before. I've already covered it. In that Bones and Rigging 101 video, we made a very simple character rig. It's right in front of you right now. It's got um, an armature, a bone structure, and the bones you can pose. And we linked the mesh of my very, very, very simple character up to the bones. So the bones um, inside the whole armature, the whole skeleton, control the mesh of the character. You can grab any bone and you have to be in pose mode with the bones selected. That means the bones turn a light blue when you select them. And you can actually control the character um, with the bones. And that's how you animate a character with a bone structure. Now the problem with this though is that it makes it very difficult to pose the character without an IK rig set up. What is IK? It's inverse kinematics. The opposite of inverse kinematics is forward kinematics and that is how by default any bone structure is set up. Forward kinematics means that if you want to move a child, in other words the hand is a child of the forearm bone and the forearm bone or the lower arm bone is a child of the uh, upper arm bone and so the hand bone is a, is a grandchild of the upper arm bone. In order to move the child bone, the ultimate child in this kind of chain, um, up to let's say here, you couldn't just grab that bone and put it up there. If I press G and grab that bone, it just rotates because it's kind of stuck to its parent. So to get this bone kind of up next to his head like he's waving, I would have to rotate this lower arm bone and this um, upper, that's the upper, that's the lower arm bone and then rotate the, oops, rotate the hand uh, like that, and that's how you would do it. But we would rather be able to pose this character um, quickly by just grabbing the hand and pulling it up, like you would do with like a ragdoll or a claymation figure if you were doing stop motion animation. Um, and that would be the better way of doing it. That's what IK rigging allows you to do. It allows you to um, grab and move a hierarchical structure, hierarchical structure of bones from the children, like inversely, as opposed to doing it in a forward from the top down um, bones, if that explains it. It's kind of hard to explain. Now this is an FK rig, it has no IK um, solutions on it, but the model that we're going to be working with today is just this basic model. It has, it is actually a mirrored one half. I've kind of cut it in him in half and made a few changes since the base model that I, or from the base model that I got off of blendsoft.com. So if we go to the modifiers tab in the properties window, actually, you know what? I am missing a outliner window. So I will put that up. It's not really necessary in this case, but oops. Uh, okay, this one should be a properties window. And this one should be an outliner window. 
There we go. Uh, if we go and select the mesh of the character, this is kind of a very basic um, template character. I think that's what it was called, character template. If we go to the modifiers tab, you'll see there's two modifiers. Actually, there's three if you include the armature modifier. There's a mirror modifier, which means that if I hide the effects of the mirror modifier by pressing the little I, you'll see that only half of them is really there. Um, and that's so that we can model the character um, or only model half of them, and it'll mirror on the other side. That makes modeling a character a whole lot easier. And there's a subsurf modifier. And because I actually have bones in this kind of finished version, which we'll get to after these three videos, um, that's why we have the armature modifier. So what does the skeleton look like? It looks like that. And if we go into pose mode, you can see that um, it has lots of bones. It's got lots of colors in the bones. But um, I'm going to kind of show multiple layers here. There's going to be a few layers. We'll actually, I'll actually show you the layers in the starting scene first. I just want to kind of show you what the model will look like, or the end result will be like. Um, so this character rig is quite a bit more complicated. It's kind of a, a moderate level rig, uh, but we'll go through it as simply as possible. Um, so if I grab a hand, you'll notice that I can just press G with this IK setup and pose this hand. You know, I can move it up. Um, and the arm, of course, follows along. I can then rotate the hand, and then rotate it only on the z-axis, and I can make him move up. I can even, grabbing these little cubes, I can kind of position his elbow. If I make his hand lower down, you can see the effects of that a whole lot uh, better. We can grab a foot bone. The foot, the foot and feet bones, rather, are uh, a little bit more complicated, because I can grab a foot bone, and then I can make him kind of stand on his toes if I want him to, and I can rotate his toes up so that he's kind of standing on midair if he were to step up onto something else. So this is a, a rig that would really help you out um, in character animation and make your characters a whole lot easier to animate if you were to rig the characters and animate them yourself or pass them on to an actual and uh, dedicated animator. Okay, so the file that we're starting with, and I'll put the link to this file in the description below, is the base model. It has um, three layers in Blender with content on them. Layers are these little dots, they're kind of like Photoshop or GIMP layers. Um, and so the first layer, you can tell which layers have, uh, have content on them by seeing the little dots on the layers. First layer has the character mesh on it, of course it has two modifiers on it. It has a mirror modifier, so you can work on one half of the character in edit mode and it will mirror on the other half. You can see the other half being affected when I mess up the mesh. Uh, it also has, has a subsurf modifier on it, so if we turn that off, you can see it gets a whole lot more jaggy. And on the layer right below the first layer, we have a floor. That's just kind of so we can render it out and it'll look nice. And on the fifth layer, or whatever layer this is, we have a camera and a lamp. So if you're going to render this file out, you need to select the first layer or any of the layers with content, then hold shift and select the other layers. And you can press a 12, render it out, see what it looks like. Um, and that floor has a special shadow only material, which means that we don't actually see, or well, the floor doesn't have any color, but it has a uh, shadow, which is nice. It's kind of like uh, one of those Mac PC commercials with two guys standing there, and you only see their shadows. Okay, so let's go ahead and show only the guy. We're going to start creating the armature. Today we're going to get through the spine and the arm and with a hand, but um, we're actually going to do the hand in the very next video. So if you have your 3D cursor, um, somewhere weird and you've downloaded this file or you're working on your own file I'm gonna press shift C and that will center my 3d cursor I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my recording of my uh, what keys I press that's a nice uh, add-on that you can get to by going to file user preferences and it's called it's in the uh, 3d view port add-on section um, your character needs to be centered on the x-axis which, which means it needs to not be farther right or farther left it needs to be exactly on the um, zero on the x-axis and your 3d cursor needs to be there too because I'm going to press shift a and add a bone and that bone's really big but the first thing we're going to do is go to the object data or the little person tab with the bone selected and click x-ray so that the bone is kind of you can see the bones through any mesh that are in front of it and we're going to go to the object tab and go down to the, the display section and change the display type from textured to wire so now we can see the bones through the mesh and the mesh through the bones. Makes it really easy to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, move it up, put the bottom, the kind of uh, head of the bone right in his crotch. And 
Um, we'll go into edit mode. So with the bone selected, I'll press tab, move that up. Let's go ahead and look at this from the side view because it's probably wrong. It's very wrong. Let's go ahead and put that tail right or the head right there and the tail of the bone right there. Right about there actually because his head's kind of tilted forward. Now we're going to take this one big bone and subdivide it up so we have the correct number of bones for this. And if we look from the front view, we can count how many bones that we need. We need a head bone, a neck bone, a rib cage bone, a spine bone, and a pelvis bone. That's five bones. So I'll press W and subdivide. And over here in the tool shelf, if you don't have that, you can press T and T hides it. Um, you can change the number of, uh, number of cuts up to four. And then I'm going to take these bones and scale them down just so we have some more room to work with here. Put the base of the head right there. The neck's a little bit shorter. Move that down there, and the rib cage is going to be bigger. Uh, the reason why I make one big bone for the rib cage is that if you actually study human anatomy, you'll learn that the your spine or human spines don't really bend very much um, where the rib, ribs are. They mostly bend at the neck and in this little middle section where the spine is, but not too much um, in the rib cage. Or that, at least that's what you learn when you study uh, anatomy for um, animation. Okay, obviously this is way wrong, so I'm going to move the neck back, and that head is too low, so I'm going to grab that base of the head and put it right about there. I'm going really quickly here. Uh, feel free to pause the video and kind of catch up with me, follow along with me while watching the video. Um, something else that you learn if you study anatomy for uh, animation is that your pelvis, human pelvises, are facing forward. They're not kind of straight up and down. They're quite ang angled forward. If you look at your waist sideways in the mirror, you'll see that it kind of cuts diagonally down the uh, your waist at your uh, at the back of your hips is higher up than it is at the front of your hips. So your pelvis is kind of tilted down, as it is in this case as well. So I'll kind of put that there. Looks pretty good to me, and that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and create some shoulders and then some arms. So I'm going to put my 3D cursor right about there, and I'm going to press Shift A. Now, because I'm inside of edit mode uh, and I press Shift A, normally you expect that menu to come up where you get to choose what kind of thing that you're adding. But uh, because we're in edit mode inside of an armature, um, the only thing that it can add is an armature or a bone. So that's what it adds. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this uh, tail of that bone and move it kind of right there because we're going to create a shoulder, uh, shoulder bone first. So he can, if we're animating him, we can kind of make him shrug. And so that looks okay, maybe a little bit higher up than that. But the important thing to think about when you're positioning these these bones is where the joints are. So this is the circle that I have selected right now, or the sphere at the tail of this bone. Uh, this is the most important thing that we place correctly because this is where the uh, arm is going to rotate from. So right there I'm kind of happy with, at least from the uh, front view. That's <laughs> way off in the side view. So let's uh, go back to the front view, select the bone, go back to the side view and move it forward. Right about there should be okay. Yeah, we can always fix it later. Um, let's go ahead and extrude this tail, that, that bone down, so E. And we'll go right to the end of the hand from the top view. That looks okay. But you'll notice that when you extrude bones out, especially if you extrude them kind of diagonally, not, so in other words, if you don't extrude them out exactly on the X, Y, or Z axes, um, they will twist. In other words, this bone is kind of rotated forward towards us. The, the bone is rolled, in other words. Um, you can fix this one of two ways. One way is to press with Control R, and that will allow you to ro rotate the bone. But the better way is to press Control N, and this will allow you to recalculate the roll. And I usually like to recalculate the roll of my bones on the Z axis. That tends to work the best for me. And now you can see, after I recalculated the roll of that bone, it's now exactly facing my me from the front perspective. So it's exactly facing or exactly perpendicular to the front orthographic view. Okay, let's go ahead and select that bone and press W and subdivide. We're going to make two cuts, not four, so that we have an upper arm bone, a lower arm bone, and a hand bone. And let's grab the end of the hand right there and that right there. Let's check it from the top view. It looks pretty good. Again, it doesn't matter how centered your bones are. That bone is obviously closer, actually sticking out of his armpit kind of area, but not sticking out of his uh, the top of his arm, and that's okay. It only matters where your joints are. Uh, we'll go ahead at some point and um, change actually how these bones look so that we can have better control over them. 
uh, or at least view view wise of them anyways um, so it looks pretty good to me um, and this is kind of the basics of making a forward kinematics rig but we're making an inverse kinematics rig um, so we're gonna make an extra bone actually to control the hand and an extra bone to control the uh, direction of the shoulder I mean the elbow um, but before we do that we're gonna rename the bones really quickly I'm gonna select the head uh, we're still in, in edit mode and go to the bone tab and it's called bone.001 but I'm gonna re rename it to head and all these names are gonna be pretty obvious I'm sticking to lowercase bones that's not the head that's gonna be the neck lowercase letters rather not bones um, this is gonna be the ribs that's going to be the spine and I'm going to call this the pelvis. There we go. I'm going to call this one shoulder dot L. Now I would copy my naming convention. Um, the kind of the naming convention that's standard is using dot capital L for all the bones that are on the right hand side. Of course, these bones are all centered. The head, the neck, and the back bones are all centered, so they don't need a dot L or, or a dot R. But the other bones do that are actually on one one side or the other. So I'm going to call this one arm underscore upper dot dot L. Uh, it's a good idea to name the limb first and then the part of the limb. So not upper dot, dot underscore arm, rather arm underscore upper is better in this case. It makes it easier to search for the bone when you're adding constraints and parents and stuff. Um, arm underscore lower, oops, dot L and hand dot L sure okay so we're gonna be starting to add the extra elements that we need to create an IK rig so be before we do that though we're going to actually change the view type of our bones and we do this because we can actually better control um, the size of our bones in other words how fat or thin they are um, just for our own uh, simplicity sake um, when we change our bone view from octahedral so I went to the object data tab and right now this shape this weird kind of diamond shape of bone is called octahedral but I'm gonna change this to B bone and obviously because of the scale of our character which is pretty small but uh, that's actually a good size these bones are way too fat so I'm gonna press A and then A again to select all the bones and to make them all thinner but all the same like lengths I'm gonna press control alt S so you can see it on my screen, Control Alt S, and I'll scale it down so that all the bones are fairly thin. Uh, not really thin, but uh, fairly thin. And that's a better size for us. So what we need to do to create an IK rig um, is create an extra bone. But there is actually a really fast way of doing IK, which isn't ideal, but I'll show it to you anyways. I'm gonna go into pose mode, which allows us to actually pose and animate the character. And if you select a bone, and then you look over in the tool shelf, you'll see an option called Auto IK. And if you check that, you can actually do a really kind of quick and dirty IK. If I press G to grab that bone, uh, it will do a kind of quick and dirty IK, but um, it's not ideal. Uh, if you grab the head, um, it can work. Um, but if you notice, if I go ahead and parent this shoulder bone, which I would do if I were you too, follow me along on this one. Uh, I'm going to select the shoulder bone and then parent it to the ribs. So I'll press Control P. Of course, I selected the ribs second. Uh, and we're going to keep offset because they're not touching each other. Um, and then I go back into pose mode and I grab the hand with the auto IK turned on. It's uh, it usually happens. Let's see if I turn it back on again. Auto IK. No. Um, it's just not a very good way of controlling it, so we're not going to use it. Sometimes if you uh, add it, it will really uh, kind of make his whole body twist and turn in weird ways. Um, so what we want to do actually is create another bone. And we do this because we can't uh, have IK work if we're... Well, I'm not going to explain it very well. What we want to do is uh, select the forearm bone and then add an IK constraint. So I'm going to go over to my Bone Constraints tab in my Properties window, and I'm going to add a constraint called Inverse Kinematics. Okay, And Inverse Kinematics, this constraint is kind of like a modifier, but it affects how this bone acts in relation to another bone that we point to. 
um, the bone that we the bone that we point to is going to be called the target, and we haven't actually created that bone yet, because in order for IK to work, you have to have a bone that's not part of the same hierarchical structure. It can't be a child of this bone, or it can't be a parent of this bone, or it can't be kind of in the same chain. Which is why we're going to make a duplicate of the hand bone. Um, another thing to that you'll learn about using IKs is that the chain length matters. If I grab this bone, actually, you know what? Let's see what happens if I grab. No. What happens if I grab that bone? The IK chain length will control how much influence along the chain or back up through the parents the bone that you're influencing, the bone that you have the IK constraint on, is influencing. So in other words, if I grab this forearm bone and I want to pose it, I don't want to impose or I don't, I don't want to pose this entire um, spine right now, but you can see this kind of dotted line going down to the very highest parent. And that's because our chain length is set to zero. Zero means unlimited. Um, but if we change that number to one, you can see that chain length uh, or that chain just go to here. So now if I grab this bone, it only rotates uh, to the elbow. If I go up to chain length of two, it'll go to there. And so I can kind of pose it from there. So it matters how long your chain length is. Uh, most of the time, we'll be using a chain length of two because arms and legs only have two sections and therefore we only need a chain length of two. Um, but let's go ahead and press A and then A and then press Alt R and then Alt G which clears the rotation and the movement of the bones in pose mode. And let's select the hand, go back into edit mode by pressing tab. And we're going to select the hand and press Shift D to duplicate it. We're going to create that extra bone. And then I'm still grabbing it because as soon as you press Shift D it duplicates and grabs it automatically. I'm going to right click and that's going to put it back in the same spot. But immediately, I'm going to press Control alt s and that's going to make my bone fatter. So I'm going to make this one a little bit fatter so we can tell the, the difference between this new, uh, we're going to call it the hand IK bone, and the original bone. Um, now you'll notice that when you duplicate a bone, it keeps the same parent. So the hand bone was a child of the, the lower arm bone. And now because we duplicated the hand and we made this new bone, which I'm going to call under the bones tab, we're going to call it hand ik.l um, it still has a parent so if actually under the bone tab with the bone selected you can see under the relations setting or the relations heading uh, the parent is the arm underscore lower dot l so it's that one right there but we don't want this new hand ik bone to have any parents so I'm going to click in there press delete and then enter um, and now it has no parent, so it's just kind of freely f floating, although it is still a part of this larger, uh, the whole skeleton, although it's not really connected, it's just kind of a free floating bone. Okay, I'm going to go back into pose mode, I'll press tab to do that, and uh, we have this IK applied to the hand. If you don't have it, or the lower arm, if, we don't, if you don't have that, um, you can go to the, const the bone constraints tab, I'm going to do it again, I'm going to select that forearm bone or the lower arm bone and go add constraint inverse kinematic so if you already had it you can keep it and we're going to point it to point the target of this bone to the new hand eye cable so I'm going to under the target the option right there I'm going to select armature because this whole the bone is inside the armature and now the bone that we're looking for inside of our armature is the hand eye cable and, and if you have a lot of bones you can just start typing so H A N D and now that narrows it down that's why we named the arm bones as we did, um, so that we can search for them more easily. Hand like k.l, and as soon as you point to a target, um, this will should turn yellow. Um, and the last step is to adjust the chain length because we don't want to have the this ik move the entire bone structure all the way back to the base of the pelvis. We want it to only affect the arm, so we're going to adjust the chain length to 1 and then to 2. So it goes up to the shoulder or the base of the shoulder. We don't want it to affect the entire shoulder, just the arm. So chain length of 2 works. And now if we grab this new hand IK bone in pose mode and press G, our IK is set up. We can grab this new bone and pose the arm as we would. And this could be animated. But there's one more thing, at least with the hand. Actually, we're going to affect the elbow too. We're going to do something extra with the elbow. This um, hand bone that we have or this IK hand bone that we have, um, well, as soon as we move it, the bone that's the original hand isn't kind of following along with it. 
and it would be a lot easier to animate if this bone kind of stayed with our hand-eye cable. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Alt-G and then Alt-R just to make sure that my bones are all, actually I'll select all, all my bones and then press Alt-G and Alt-R um, to make sure everything's back in the same spot. We're going to constrain the original hand bone to the hand-eye cable so that when we uh, grab the hand-eye cable, the hand bone, the, just the original hand bone, will follow along with the same rotation. We're going to constrain the rotation of the original hand bone to match the rotation of the hand eye cable. Uh, so with the hand bone selected in pose mode, you're going to add a new constraint. You're going to add a copy rotation constraint. Just like with any other constraint, it needs another bone that to be pointed to. So we're going to point to the target, which is inside the armature. And then the bone inside of the, the armature that, that we're looking for is the hand eye K dot elbow. And we're going to change the space in which we're working with. Um, every bone, because you can rotate a bone, has both a local orientation and a global orientation. There are a few more, but those are the main two types. You'll notice that because uh, I have the bone selected. Actually, you know what? Is that exactly pointing the way it is? Um, if you have something selected with the gizmo, like anything selected with the gizmo, you'll see the gizmo axes are pointing normally on the global axes. They are exactly following the the way that the axes are pointing in your entire world. In other words, the green is always pointing with the green, the red with the red, and the blue with, is up and down. But uh, the, if the bones are twisted, we can act, they're actually pointing it in a different direction. So if I, you know, rotate this bone, and you'll see now that my constraints are working, the inner hand bone is um, following along with the uh, uh, hand eye cave bone, um, if we change the orientation of the gizmo from global to normal, the gizmo changes and it points to follow along with the way that your bone is facing. So if I switch to the rotate gizmo, you'll see that this rotate gizmo is now kind of always pointing with the direction of my bone. And this makes it a lot easier to animate and pose your characters and actually move objects sometimes. But you'll switch often between global and normal. I'm going to go back to global and I'm going to press Alt R. Um, with the constraints, with this copy rotation constraint, so I have the hand bone selected um, in my bone constraints tab, we're going to change it from world space to local space and world space to local space. So we're converting the rotation uh, of the target to, the, um, to this bone from the local space to the local space, just so that they match more evenly or they always stay um, in the same spot. So now I can grab the hand IK bone and, oops, that's odd. Maybe it should be look world space and world space. Maybe it is. Let's see. Yep, okay, I was wrong. It is the world space. Just leave it on world space. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and fix the elbow because if we grab the hand and move it, let's say, up towards the body, we would like to be able to animate our character doing the chicken dance, right? We want to be able to control where his um, elbow is pointing so he can actually so we can control you know just for animation sake so um, we're gonna press alt actually we'll press a and then a and then alt r and alt g to clear out the pose that we just did and go back into edit mode and I'll go to my top view we're gonna create a new bone to affect how the elbow or where the elbow is pointing so with the joint selected in between the upper arm and the lower arm we're gonna press e and again we're in edit mode and then after we press E, we're going to press Y. And that's going to make the bone um, extrude straight back. We press E and then Y to extrude it on the Y axis. It's going to be a really short bone. Um, and then I'll select it and press Control-Alt-S. We'll make it a little bit fatter so it's more like a cube. And now it has a parent, right? Because we extruded it from a joint in the parented structure. So we're going to um, unparent it. So the easy way, actually there's two ways. Um, the hard way is to do it in here, in the Bone tab. We can select this and press Delete. Or, with the bone selected, we can press Alt-P. And that will bring up the Clear Parent menu, and we can clear the parent that way. And you can see over here that it's clear. So now I can grab that bone and pull it back. And it has no parent, so it's not attached anymore. And so we're going to do the same thing again. This is going to be using the IK constraint. So we'll go back into... Actually, it's a good idea to bring it quite a bit back and we should rename this bone. So I'm going to call this one um, elbow ik.l 
and we'll go back into pose mode. So we selecting the we're selecting the bones, um, and they're blue. Uh, we're gonna select the elbow IK bone first. After you'll press A, we'll select the elbow IK bone first. Hold Shift, select the upper arm bone, and instead of going to the bone constraints and adding it this way, the shortcut is to select the bone that you want to add it to last. So in other words, we're going to select the elbow IK bone and then the upper arm bone um, last. And then we'll press, uh, I believe it is Shift I. Yep, add IK, so Shift I. But you have to select the upper arm bone last. And that adds the constraint. Now it gets all messed up, and that's just because of the chain length. If I turn the chain length up to one, <laughs> it automatically gets solved. So um, for this upper arm bone, it is actually now pointing to the elbow IK bone. So if we move this hand back, you'll notice that I can now grab this bone and it'll follow, make the elbow follow along. So I'm gonna quickly review that. I'm gonna undo a few steps. Uh, we selected the elbow IK bone and then I held shift and I selected the upper arm bone. Of course, I'm in pose mode right now. And then I'll press shift I and add the IK to the active bone and then under the bone constraints tab we change the chain length up to one so now we have a pretty good well functioning um, arm bone we can grab point the elbow we can grab the hand IK bone and rotate it up and we can rotate it on the Z axis or Z axis to make it pointing towards us and that's how we could point and pose our character I'll press A then A and alt R and alt G uh, we're almost done, but we're going to fix a few little problems. If you've studied the anatomy of the human body, or at least our bones, you'll know that we have two bones in our lower arm. And this allows us to twist our arm uh, nicely. But obviously, that would be hard to do. Um, not very pe many people do actually do that when they're creating bones for a, um, a 3D animation or 3D animated character. But there is kind of a cheap way of fixing this problem. You'll notice that if I just were to grab that bone, the hand bone, and I wanted him to f twist his hand or twist his arm to um, make his hand face forward, his palm face forward. We could do that. We could change our gizmo orientation to normal, which changes our gizmo orientation, and then twist it like that. But if you've done any boning or parenting with armatures before, you'll know that if we did that, uh, the mesh would get very kind of distorted around the wrist because we've just suddenly taken. Uh, our armature and we've done a 90 degree twist on it um, and that's going to twist the mesh as well in a really bad way. So I'm going to select all the bones, press Control R, Control G just to make sure everything is cleared out. And this lower arm bone, the way to fix, kind of simulate two bones is to actually change the number of segments of that bone. So with the bone selected, we go to the bone tab and we can actually change the number of segments this bone has. This kind of simulates having multiple bones in one. So I'm going to change the number of segments. You'll see if I uh, change the segments up to two under the deform section, the bone's actually now made of two kind of sub bones. We're going to turn it up to maybe about four or five. It's up to you really. Um, but as soon as we do that, it kind of gets distorted. You'll notice that the more bones I add, the kind of more um, wavy it gets. The bone kind of starts to curve in weird ways. If I turn it down, you see it goes straight again. Um, and the way to fix this is just to turn the ease in and the ease out values right below the segments down to zero and then down to zero. And that kind of straightens it back out again. So now if you grab the hand bone and twist it around, you'll see that there's a gradual twist in the uh, lower arm bone first or the lower arm bone as well. And uh, that will help out your mesh look good when you're animating it and rotating the hands around. Okay, I'm gonna press Alt G and Alt R to clear that out. We can add these segments in other places as well. We can add them to the neck as well. So we'll turn these segments up in the neck to maybe three and then turn the ease in down to zero and ease out down to zero. Same thing with the spine. That's probably the most important place to put it other than the lower arm. I'm going to change the segments up to maybe five and then change the ease in and ease out down to zero as well. Um, you can play around with these values. The spine might be a good place to actually have ease in and ease out, so the spine actually bends um, in interesting ways. Um, now in my finished example that I showed you at the beginning of uh, this video, 
we actually added an IK bone for the ribs. And that's because I want to be able to pose the ribs really well. Right now, the spine structure is still in forward kinematics. In other words, we have to, to rotate the uh, body, we'd have to rotate you know, each individual bone. Uh, we couldn't just grab the rib cage and place it like we would want to. So I haven't seen anybody else do it quite like this or do it, apply an IK to the ribs as well. But I'll press in edit mode, I'll duplicate the spine bone uh, and press Control alt s This is the exact same as the hand bone. I'll make that a little bit bigger. We're going to name this ribs IK and we're going to press alt P to clear the parent and then in pose mode we're going to select the well, we'll select nothing then select the outer ribs IK and then hold shift and I believe we want to select the spine and press shift I and to active bone yes please and then change the IK chain to with the spine selected to 2. So now I can grab this kind of outer IK uh, ribs bone and I can pose the character more easily like that. You'll notice that you can grab any of these IK bones and move them way far away. Um, so you'll have to kind of get used to that when you're animating. I'm going to right click to kind of cancel out that movement. You can make that bone if you want to. I like it, but um, a lot of people don't. It's kind of up to you. The very last thing with these IK bones, it's important that before you parent the mesh to the armature, that you turn off the deformation of these bones. All of these bones, you want to deform the mesh when we ultimately finish the skeleton, which we'll finish in part three of this mini series. But we don't want the IK bone, in other words, we don't want that elbow bone to actually deform the mesh. We want it to affect how the other bones move, um, but not actually change the bending or the, the deformation of the alien character template mesh thing. So with these IK bones selected, we'll go through them one at a time. Um, I'm going to go to the bones tab and uncheck deform under the deform section. So we don't want any of the IK bones, in other words the rib IK bone, we don't want it to deform the mesh. Same thing with the um, elbow bone, same thing with the hand IK bone. All the other bones are going to deform the mesh. All right. That is it for part one of this mini series. Come back and we'll work on the hands. We'll also duplicate the left side bones onto the right side and have that process done really quickly for us. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.